So I gave you an equation to solve that had the same format as the other equations that we solved on Monday of last week, right? And the format is that one side of the equation is just a number, and the other side of the equation is an expression that only has a single term with a variable in it, and that variable has an exponent of 1, a hidden exponent of 1, u to the first power here, right? So that makes it a linear equation. Those are the kinds that we're going to specialize in solving over the next four weeks. Um, but what makes this a different equation, a different example than the kind that we solved before, is that the coefficients in this equation just so happen to be fractions, negative 3 halves, negative 2 sevenths, negative 9 fifths. And so if you can suspend disbelief long enough to use the same strategy to solve this equation as the strategy that we used previously, then you will get to the right answer at the cost of having to do a bunch of fraction arithmetic, which is always good practice, right? um, but it opens the door for potential errors. Um, let me show you, let me put up on the screen one of the solutions uh, that I saw uh, wandering around, and we can take a look at what uh, went on in that solution. So here it is. Um, so we start out with the equation over here on the left, uh, negative 3 halves equals negative 2 sevenths u minus 9 fifths. Um, and then the first step that was done in this solution is that 9 fifths was added to both sides. Um, why is that a, a good idea for a first step in this problem? What are, we, what are we really doing here? How does that fit into our strategy that we were talking about earlier? Why is adding 9 fifths a good idea? It gets it out of the way, right. What we're trying to do is unwrap the u from the expression on the right-hand side. Well, the u is wrapped inside two layers of arithmetic, a multiplication by negative 2 sevenths, and then also a subtraction of 9 fifths. But we can't get to that multiplication until after we've worried about the adding and subtracting on the outside. We're reversing the order of operations. That's why adding 9 fifths is a good choice here. Um, and adding 9 fifths on the right-hand side has the effect of getting rid of that 9 fifths and leaving us with just negative 2 sevenths u. But whatever I do to one side of the equation, I also need to do to the other. And so on the left-hand side, we end up with a fraction addition problem, negative 3 halves plus 9 fifths. And so then we flip through the mental Rolodex and say, how do we add fractions? Well, they need to have a common denominator. And so to get a common denominator between 2 and 5, we can get away with just multiplying 2 times 5 and getting 10. In fact, that is the least common denominator for these two fractions. Um, and then changing the numerators of those fractions by multiplying them by the, the cross-corresponding denominator gives me negative 15 and 18. And then we can just add those two fractions straight across the numerator. Negative 15 plus 18 gives me 3. And so when I finish my addition of these two fractions, I get 3 tenths. So, so far, our work is reversing the order of operations and having to do an addition of two fractions, which is you know, a little bit of an involved process, but we've gotten, we've gotten through that step, and now we're ready to look at this equation, 3 tenths equals negative 2 sevenths u. And then the question is, what do I do to get from there to getting the u by itself? If I'm reversing the order of operations, what's my play? What's the move I want to do here? Division. Why division? Why is division the right way to unwrap the u from this expression? Because it's being multiplied by the fraction. Yes, right. So the, 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 the reality check, whenever you're working a problem like this, is just to imagine, what if this were a simpler problem? 3 <coughs> equals negative 2u. So what if it were whole numbers instead of fractions? Right? Well, you would do that same strategy. Because there's a multiplication sign implicit in between the negative 2 and the u, we can get rid of that multiplication by dividing. So we would just need to divide the right-hand side by negative 2, divide the left-hand side by negative 2, and that would get us home. So anytime you're dealing with a lot of fractions in the service of a, solving an equation, just give yourself that reality check. Would I be doing this if they were whole numbers instead of fractions? And the answer always needs to be yes. Right? The strategy needs to be the same, even if the numbers are now of a different type. So dividing is the right play here. Divide both sides by negative 2 sevenths. And so this person's solution, whoops, let me get a better color here. This person's solution, divide by negative 2 sevenths. I would need to divide the left-hand side also by negative 2 sevenths. Um, but in this person's solution, they don't write divide by negative 2 sevenths, what's written here instead? <coughs> Multiply by 
negative 7 over 2, is that the same thing? Yeah, it's the same thing. That's keep, change, flip, right? It's how to turn a division problem into a multiplication problem. We're multiplying by negative 7 halves because what we really want to do is divide by negative 2 sevenths. So those two are exactly the same thing. Um, and when it comes time to actually compute that quotient, we would have had to keep change flip anyway. And so we ended up here with 3 tenths times negative 7 over 2. And how do you multiply two fractions? Straight across, straight across the numerator, straight across the denominator. Uh, and so this person's solution is u equals negative 21 over 20. And I agree that that is the solution to this equation. Um, and all it took was for us to reverse the order of operations, worry about addition and subtraction first until all of it's done, then worry about multiplication and division until all of it's done, and at the end of that process, we should have the variable by itself. And we do. So as long as we are comfortable churning through the fraction arithmetic necessary to pull that off, this is great. 